We want to talk about this morning perfecting holiness. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. The apostle Paul writes here, he says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What promises is he referring to? Towards the end of chapter 6, he says, God says, I will be your God. You will be my people. You are the temple of God. I will dwell among you. I will walk among you. You will be my sons and daughters. So these are the promises he's referring to. And he says, brothers, you know, having received these kinds of promises from God, what should our response be? Let us cleanse ourselves. I want to talk about three important things we see in scripture. Number one is this, the empowering of his Holy Spirit. So one of the things... God the Holy Spirit has come to impart to you and me and to empower us is in the area of holiness. And all we've got to do is ask him, invite him, talk to him. Holy Spirit, help me in this area. The second way God works his holiness in us is through his word. The word of God, while does it, it does so many things, one of the things the word of God works in us is that it sanctifies us. It's like a cleansing agent. It cleans us. The third way... That God works perfecting holiness in us is through his discipline. So why does God discipline us? So that we could grow in his holiness. While we are going through discipline, it's not joyful, it's a little painful. But there is a reward. It produces righteousness. So how does God discipline us? The primary ways is what we've already talked about. He corrects us. So discipline is to lovingly correct. He corrects us by his Holy Spirit and by his words. So the moment you and I do something wrong, immediately you find something inside you saying, hey, not right. Or he also corrects us through his words. So you're reading the word and, and the word sheds light and, 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 and you realize, God, that area of my life is not right. I'm doing something wrong. Then God also disciplines us through other believers. So our fellow believers may come to us, speak into our lives, they correct us, hey, you shouldn't be doing like this, it should be like that. And that's another way that God brings discipline and correction in our lives. And we receive that. The fourth level of discipline is God permits us to reap of what we sow. Now, as God works in us through his word, through his spirit, through other people around us, you know, our response has to be consecration. Now, consecration is not always an easy process. If there's something that's causing you to sin, deal with it with severity. And in your process of dealing with it, it could be painful. It's like amputation. But he says, doing that is profitable for you. And then... There is godliness, but godliness must be something beyond the externals. So on the outside, everything may look great. But the person on the inside could be not very pleasing. So godliness, I want to remind us and encourage us, start with the insights. Now in closing, I want to just talk about very quickly, mention some destroyers of holiness. What are some things that destroy holiness? I just want to quickly mention four things here. One is hypocrisy. It is when we want to look good before people and we're not concerned about our heart condition before God. The second destroyer of holiness is worldliness. So there's nothing wrong in enjoying the nice things God has given to us in this world. By all means, you enjoy what God has put in, in this, the good things that are there. But the Bible warns us, but from being a friend of the world and becoming an enemy of God. Thirdly, it's strife. So strife robs us of holiness. I get angry with people, get into strife, cannot walk holy. Because I'm angry, I say things and do things out of strife. It robs us of holiness. So always keep your relationships with people right. The last one I want to mention here, if you give priority to natural desires, we all have natural desires. They are legitimate. But in order to satisfy a natural desire, don't sell. Don't compromise on your life of holiness. Mm -hmm.